much is rich? We're gonna find out. Okay, I don't know how to go. Ow! It's hard having money. But seriously, how much money do you think you need to be considered rich? If you ask this question to 100 different people, you will literally get 100 different answers. But there's only one right way to answer this question, and it's very mathematical. It's not something vague like, well, that depends on where you live, and what your budget's like, and what your lifestyle's like, which of course varies from person to person. Nah, it's a lot more specific than that, because that is wrong. Sorry, <laughs> Trump's just everywhere in the news, I'm just... Yeah. Let me take you through all the phases of what people think it means to be rich, because if you watch this video all the way through, I promise, by the end of this video, the next time you find yourself talking about money, like when you're at a family get-together, also discussing religion and politics, like you do, you're gonna blow them away with your financial wokeness. So how many $100 Bills do I need to produce to be considered rich? That's what we're gonna find out today. <laughs> Hey, my name is Andre Jick, and if you're watching my channel, you are probably from the United States. And that means you are probably already considered very rich. In order to understand just how rich you probably are, you need to compare yourself to the rest of this world in order to get a better sense of understanding and appreciation of just how much money you probably are making in comparison to everyone else. Your mind is about to be blown. According to globalrichlist.com, which is a website I'll leave in the description below the video, if you plug in your location, I'm gonna scroll down, use USA, and then put in your income for the annual net income, I'm gonna use the average USA worker salary, which is about $50,000 per year, or roughly $25 per hour. That's how much I was getting paid at my job before I quit it to try my hand at YouTube to begin with. 50K per year is not a ton of money, but it's certainly not a little bit of money. It's about the average. So doing that, it shows that my results on average Average puts me in the top 0.31% of the entire world. Forget about being in the top 1%, I am in the decimal category when compared to the rest of this world. That is insane. It would take an average labor worker in Ghana exactly 312 years to earn what most Americans will earn in just one year. In fact, if I wanted to buy this delicious drink right here, it would take me one minute of my life to be able to afford this at $50,000 per year. It would take them 60 minutes or one hour of their life to afford this thing. In fact, your $50,000 per year salary would be enough to pay the monthly salaries of 307 doctors in Malawi. Kind of puts things in perspective, doesn't it? Imagine how the rest of this world looks at Americans when we complain that we don't make enough money on a $100,000 per year salary. I think that says a lot about American consumer spending culture, and that needs to change. But Andre, you can't compare my income living in the US to somebody living in Ghana? That makes no sense. And this is true. You can't exactly compare the two because your spending power has a lot to do in determining your wealth. If you're living in Ghana and you're making $50,000 per year, that life is going to look very different from someone who's making 50k in the United States. So you can't consider yourself rich just because geographically speaking, you're making more money than everyone else. But it should give you a sense of appreciation and just how lucky you are to be setting the standard for the entire world. Because at any moment, you can go to a different country and retire 20 or 30 years earlier because of something called spatial or geographical arbitrage by becoming an expat in a different country and retiring decades earlier. And many American people have done that. But the fact that we even have that as an option means that you are probably very rich. But okay, what does it mean to be objectively rich? When I was a wee young lad, I used to think that being wealthy meant wearing high-end fashion designer brands. But as I got a little older, my definition of what it meant to be rich turned to luxury watches. Because if you can drop 70 grand on a frosted out Rolex, of course you are rich. And I really hate this period of my life because I wasted so much money chasing these little luxury watches that I don't even wear anymore. And no, I did not pay $70,000 
for this tacky Rolex. It's fake, but it made me feel cool. And no, luxury watches does not mean you are rich. After my watch phase, I turned my attention to luxury cars. Yes, that must be it. And every time I saw someone step out of a McLaren or a Bugatti or a Ferrari, I always thought to myself like, man, I would do anything to be that guy attracting those girls. But what I ended up discovering was you actually only attract <laughs> other dudes because girls for the most part, especially ones that are worth pursuing, usually do not even care about cars. But I wouldn't discover that until way later in life. And girls, if you're watching my channel, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Is this theory correct? Or do you actually care about what a guy drives? I haven't had a car in like three years because I'm a hood rat and I do hood rat things. And when I turned exactly 22 years old, I thought I figured out the ultimate wealth rich status. And that's when I moved into a $1.5 million rental condo at the heart and center of Las Vegas. Of course, my employer paid for most of that rent. I paid like $700 a month and they covered the rest. And that was such a brilliant move because there was no way I could ever afford that place on $25 per hour. But it made me feel like I was successful and it gave me that illusion and it made me stay at that job a lot longer than I should have. Well played employer, well played. And there are many other little tricks like this that employers will use to tie you down to the job and make you feel rich and successful and one of those tricks is job titles. Like mine was director of production. It sounds so significant and important doesn't it? Like I'm an executive marketing director. I'm a senior coordinator. I don't know what those mean, but they make me feel so important and successful and rich. How dare you, Andre? I built this construct for myself and here you are challenging my identity. Respect my authority. But unfortunately, none of these mean that you are rich either. And if you ask most people how much money they would consider is rich in terms of an actual dollar figure, it will range anywhere between $1 million to simply just having no debt. But let's ask our friend Google because the internet is always right. How much money is considered rich? According to CNBC, in order to be considered rich in the United States, you need to have a net worth of at least 2.3 million dollars. But that study was done by asking people how much they think they need to be rich. And most people have no clue what they're talking about. So that's wrong too. If we look at each state, it really varies. But the number people think they need is reportedly $1.7 million. In fact, here's a map that'll show you how much you need according to each state. Way to make me feel depressed, Andre. Don't worry, you are not alone. Most people are nowhere near those numbers. My net worth is not even close to that. In fact, my parents who are in their mid 50s will be lucky to have six figures saved up in their savings account. So I'm just telling you right now, the numbers we just talked about are still way, way off. Here's what's crazy. The mainstream media is so wrong about money. There is so much overblown fear and overestimation of how much money we actually need. In fact, some of my friends have went to financial advisors and were told point blank, you will need two to five million dollars. What? In fact, I read comments from people on YouTube saying, a million dollars just isn't what it used to be. In what world is a small loan of a million dollars not a lot of money? You could save and invest one million dollars really safely into 4% dividend yielding stocks and be paid $40,000 a year, nearly all tax-free for the next 1,000 or 10,000 years and never run out of money because that 4% is making you more money than you can spend it at 4% and you would get a higher income every single year through dividend raises, far outpacing inflation. So I don't know what people are talking about, but $1 million can retire you anywhere in the world. Have you ever been so overwhelmed by the amount of errands you need to run in your day that you just do none of them? You go to sleep and then wake up hoping that the problems just disappear? I've done that. And I still do, but I think what the mainstream media is doing is the financial equivalent of making people give up because then when you know you have so much ahead of you and you're like, there's no way I'm ever gonna reach millions of dollars. People quit before they've even started. What's the point of saving and investing when you need so much money? I'm just gonna continue living my life the way I've been living it, enjoying it, and hoping to reach social security age or better yet, win the lottery. <laughs> my favorite reason, Andre, I don't plan to ever retire. 
where I actually enjoy what I do for a living. Oh, I can make a video on this one reason alone about how misguided that type of thinking is. Here's the real truth. As much as I want to stoke the flames of conspiracy theorists about how the mainstream media is keeping us dumb and ignorant on purpose, I don't think that's the case. I think mainstream media is equally ignorant about money. The real answer is, you are rich when you no longer have to work actively for your money. And you can figure out your rich number right now. All you have to do is download the Mint or the Personal Capital app. I've got no financial incentive, by the way. I've got no affiliate links. I don't make no money from recommending these apps. I just use them in the past. And all you have to do is track your expenses. So right now, just track what you've spent last month. Add up everything, your mortgage, your groceries, your car, everything, add it all up, and then multiply that number by 12. That is your annual expense number. And then you're gonna multiply that number by 25. Make sure though that you are multiplying your annual expense number by 25 and not your income. Two very different results. And the last time I tracked my personal expenses, they were roughly $2,000 per month. And if you take 2,000, multiply by 12, you get $24,000 per year. You take that number and multiply it by 25, and we get $600,000. And that's how much I need invested at 4%. This is my rich number, because 4% of $600,000 is $24,000, which puts me right back at the beginning, $24,000 of annual expenses, where my passive income meets my annual expenses at the crossover point, or what's known as the rule of 25. The cool thing about my plan to getting there with dividends that I show in my videos here on YouTube is that $24,000 per year, if it was only earned from dividends and I made less than $38,600, I would be able to earn that $24,000 completely tax-free and live in many places of this world very, very comfortably. But you forgot about inflation, idiot. Your $24,000 per year is gonna be worth way less in 20 years from now. Well, hello, my internet intellectual. That is completely wrong because with dividend growth investing, every single year, my dividend stocks will actually increase their dividend payouts far outpacing inflation, which is roughly 2% per year. My dividend growth stocks have done about 6% per year on average, which is way more than inflation. So with time, my purchase power increases, not decreases. Here are some shower thoughts for you. Isn't it crazy that we are actually born rich when we are kids, and then we get bored of being rich, we grow up, we want more out of life, we get our own lives, and then we become indentured slaves for eternity to these pieces of fabric. And some of us dig deeper holes than others and then spend the rest of our lives clawing our way clawing our way back to the beginning of when we were kids. So the next time you hear someone laughing about how a million dollars is just not a lot of money, you can laugh back knowing that that person has no clue what they're talking about. In fact, neither do politicians, teachers, nurses, engineers, doctors, lawyers, movie stars, doesn't matter. Everyone is terrible at money. I'm not saying they're bad at making money, they're just bad at understanding and managing money itself. So now you know your luxury stuff, your debt, and your job titles have nothing to do with being rich. But if you wanna start saving and investing right away, the best thing you can do is download an app like Robinhood and Webull, fund your accounts, get your free stocks. It's literally free money. I will leave links for these in the description below this video. I think it's the best thing ever. And love you guys, I'll see you all very soon. It's my birthday, I'm gonna go out and sell Celebrate. Bye bye.